<clears throat> so, you know. Hello. So, since my butcher's palette is actually like, I have to scrape all the paint out of it. It's not a good, a good, um, not a good deal as what's on. So I decided to, what am I doing? To just start off with doing some stuff. Um, perhaps in watercolors. And that's it. Okay. I took pictures of some flowers. Not some flowers, but some flowers that are pretty cute. I think you will look good on a watercolor paper. This one that I'm using is 11 by 15. This is in stretch more and I'm using a block of watercolor. Just gonna turn the camera just a tad to the side. So like that you guys see what I'm doing. And we're just gonna go right into painting. And it's busy here on some Saturdays. I'm like Saturday or Sunday. It's pretty busy. So, hi, how are you? So, please bear with the noises and the, all my TVs are on today. But if I don't do it, then I'll never have a chance to actually do anything. So, yeah. Here I am. I really like this core watercolor. This is the, the watercolor I have had it for a while. It's really good. However, it's very, very uh, inky, very thick, very, you know, the color is what you get. So you have to be careful when you're laying into your canvas because, or into your watercolor paper because it will just spread. So it's pretty cool. I'm just gonna let, I'm just gonna let it dry for a little bit, just a little bit. Just gonna get that yellow over here. I love that yellow. This one is from Sennelier, and it's pretty, 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 pretty yellow. So very pretty yellow, but it's also not as pungent as I usually use a more inky base yellow but we're just gonna go with this let me put my thing onto wi-fi let me see if perhaps because it's downloading a video you guys are falling so if that happens i'm sorry but we're just gonna go on with what we came here for because I have to grunt every single time every single moment that I'm able to paint it's not like it's almost like a privilege type of thing believe it or not so I like this paper I'm just not crazy about it Now remember that it's like semi-human. And somewhat kind of soda. Oh, like a little bit more difficult to maneuver, but not impossible, so just gonna drag our paint and since that the blue is going to be hi how are you the blue is going to be almost like my sketching so i'm adding some blue because 
The rest is basically just purple. Okay. So if you don't get to see these live, don't worry about it because you can always replay this. Um, you can have this video for many, many days to come because I actually don't. Can you lower that? No, Just yes, a little bit. Uh, huh? Please. Because I actually don't erase them unless something happens like a phone call. Even though I've been receiving phone calls and I still just do what I gotta do. So, I'm going to lay that. And I have like two sides here with purple, I don't know why. But we're just gonna look. How are you? We're just gonna lay our orange. And this is um, orange or purple. And this is gonna be like my center or the center of my flower here and i'm just gonna lay the color as i go and of course i kind of just water it as i'm going a little bit away from thank you darling as i'm going a little bit away from mom do you still have the ethanol or the, the okay. iso pipe iso propel in my room next to the tv Okay, I'm just gonna go down. And thank you, darling. How are you? How you doing? And then again, remember that this paper is a little bit wetter, so you'll have to really manage how you want and how much water you want it to actually gather onto the paper because it could be good and it could be bad if you don't control it but what it colors is it's okay some people are scared of using purple because it's almost like you're doing like hmm, who can repair that right but don't be afraid. This is something that he needs a lot of purple anyways. So there's not much. Just gonna leave the middle. And I'm doing what we called graduated or granulated. And you can do that with multicolors as well. You know, I I'm trying my best to keep up with, you know, to just continue painting regardless of my work schedule, which is not easy. But, you know, I see, like, I don't know, like, I feel happier every time I paint. I feel like, hey, you know what, I'm doing what I'm supposed to, rather than just feeling sorry and not doing anything. Um, I'm sure that every creative out there resonates with the same. <laughs> You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Because you feel like, oh, something is missing, something is missing, what's missing, what's missing, what's missing. Something in my life is not going right, something is missing. And it's because you've been postponing work, or you're not really, you haven't painted in a while. So, it just affects me, I don't know. It makes me feel like something is missing, what's going on, you know? I don't get it until like, oh, I see, yes, I haven't painted in like three days, four days, a week. That's what's going on. It felt like weeks. So I was telling, I actually came here and I was like, oh, I haven't painted in a week. And then when I actually reviewed some of the videos of when I was painting the flower, the last flower that I was doing, it's, it, was, it's, it was three days. So, yeah. So... So, 
if you notice that I left this white part here, I'm actually doing it on purpose because it's actually going to help the painting. Um, since we're not actually sketching, it's a little bit more difficult. So I'm somewhat leaving my, I guess, like sort of like a map towards what I'm doing so like that I don't go too far or too... I could you know we, you can mess it up if you don't follow along the roads of whatever map quest thing that you are doing with your painting and this is not like an easy thing to do but just think of shape and form when you think that way oh you know what you study the flower it has three petals, one is overlapping the, the two on the top, on the side. It becomes easy. Okay. Just gonna swipe this up like that. Like if I was giving like a little bit over there. I'll do the same thing over here. And of course, I still have some purple, so I have to squeeze that out of the brush because now I'm going to very, very lightly, I'm just going to add that little bit of a purplish on the top. You know, when I first went to this customer's house, um, these were on a pot right in front of his house. And I'm like, oh, before he comes out, let me just take a picture because this might be a, a painting one day. And so I'm glad that I did. And when he came out, of course, he took, he caught, he caught me taking a picture. Like, what a weirdo, you know? Now, so I explained to him, no, I paint them. You know, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be disrespectful or anything, you know? And he said, like, oh yeah, I planted those. I'm like, yeah, they're beautiful, so, you know? But, you know, it's kind of like a weird thing because it's like, they're so small. They're, these, these flowers are actually this size. They don't grow as fast as that size, so, you know, taking a picture of it, for some people, if they don't know what the heck you're doing, but like, what is she just, like, she's trying to get a fairy from it out of there or something? Did she see something? She's pick, taking pictures of bugs? Okay, I'm just gonna drag with me part of it I'm not going crazy I just want the sort of like where the petal like the light really light petal ends just to show a bit of my painting okay and you basically have basically have your flower done and all we gotta do is perhaps just add a little bit more of that um purple in so I'm going now with the leaf and of course you know I have my phone here so I kind of just really look at that leaf right there and the same way you're just gonna go with shape and form and I'm gonna do somewhat kind of just change things a little so it can help my painting all right so this flower that is on the corner i'm just gonna just add it to the bottom part instead i'm just gonna drag with me a little bit of that water and just gonna lower this like so okay and then we're later going to overlap it with a little bit of green. And we have our leaf. That easy. Just gonna make it a little bit bigger and expand this just lower. Same thing here. And of course I clean up the rest or the excess. Okay. So since I have this big old flower right in the middle, like I can leave it like this. Or I can add a little bit more interesting things. It's sort of like a viewer type thing because you're actually when you're doing a painting, you're also 
um, basically constructing a somewhat a story and people like that stuff sometimes sometimes they don't care but you know I'm just gonna do that for my own whatever so that's the only thing so I have to like position whatever else I'm going to add here since it's like basically right in the middle if I want it I can add it on the bottom side or I can add it right on the corner so for this if I'm going to add two I'm gonna add two leaves now if I add two leaves hold on a second if I add the two leaves then I can do the bulk so bulk leaf bulk leaf bulk leaf let's just continue let's just do it see where it takes us just gonna make it come out from the corner And remember that everything that you're adding to your painting is basically to help you out. All right. So out of the picture, I'm basically just fragmenting everything. So out of that picture, I'm just fragmenting every single piece, like just adding here, taking out there, nip, nip, nip picking. It's called. So I'm nip picking out of the picture. So I add one. Two, we have our three elements and we can actually add a lot of another leaf but for that other leaf I'm just going to start off with instead of that grain that, that yellow that I started this one with just gonna add a little bit of green just gonna make it a little bit lighter because that also helps with our view gonna wet my brush and go around go around come here okay and like so and I want to make sure that both are not competing with each other so one is a little bigger, taller, lighter, or wider, or longer, and the other one is smaller than the other. So I have some type of uni um, unity in my work. All right, now I'm going back and forth with my, with the petal that I left on the top. And for the petal, I'm gonna use a little bit more of a pinkish, because I'm giving it a little less of a value and since it's a painting you can actually play with color that way even though on our picture oops sorry even though on our picture here it's really purple and white so you can do that use your artistic uh, artistic license to change and do your own thing you know so you can do whatever you want with your painting and of course I'm going to take out some of the paint because I want a really tiny bit of that pink and I'm just gonna drag with me and pull up I don't know if you can see all right okay so if you were doing like roses um, peonies what else different like very light um, soft strokes you can definitely also do something like that and then again we're just going to go back to our big flower here or the main attraction well do you want to go to the um store and get the batteries maybe later no no go ahead and do your thing okay and since this one is doing some sort of like a bell type of way like that like is a scoop better say like a scoop um leaving parts of 
the up uh, like a fold basically leaving that fold in uh -huh. and I'm just gonna move along and you can tell how beautiful that purple looks with that white background like it's pretty beautiful of course um it could be a little bit challenging because it's a color that it's very unforgiving but you can tell how beautiful it looks when you're adding to the white paper right Okay, I'm just gonna use this white part. Just gonna do that kind of like a. Just gonna use that white part there and leave it like that, just for fun. Okay. Then I'm gonna add a hint of dark blue, Prussian blue, perhaps. Okay, I'm just gonna add that to the center of the flower, and it just gives it a little bit more of an interesting look. Okay, and then I'm going to start adding more shadow into the top petals as well. Mm. And we're going to kind of just exchange with just a clean brush that is actually going to help us spread all that good paint around okay and we're going to do the same thing here add really dark purple okay gonna come just a little bit more this is a very 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 heavy heavy loaded brush okay just gonna clean it up let's take out some of the excess out I'm just gonna come here with my clean brush and just kind of just spread it with the water or drag it with the water like that And this is going to help my painting. Just going to give it a little bit of form. Okay. I'm going to use that as well. And just spread it a little bit over here. That's going to help us. And then again, I can hear you. What? And then I'm gonna go back again. I'm gonna dip it on my Prussian blue. And just to like makes it more a little bit more interesting. Okay. And of course, if you are like me, I don't care much about the water because I've been used, I'm gonna be using that color all over but if you were to do like let's say if you have to transfer back to another lighter color i would suggest you to toss the water with the inkish purple on it because you're gonna have trouble you're gonna have you know um a base of a cool tone or a purple tone underneath so we're gonna go here i'm just gonna grab the same green that i use for the leaf and we're going to finish the petal. 
And since this brush is a little bit more pointy, it allows me to do a bit more detail. And I'm just gonna go on parts of the petal and just add the green stuff. How's that? It's gonna, I'm just gonna use that yellow to kind of just stay there. That's my second, my first layer, and it will help me also with the light of the petal as well. I'm just gonna come here and I'm just gonna add a bit more of that green. Okay. Okay. what like this and I'm just going to do like the a really fine line and it's gonna help me with my shadow one of the things that I do not like about working with pictures is that thing you don't get no shadow so you kind of just have to reinvent yourself when you're dealing with pictures I'm just going to cover that, okay? All right, and we're going to go back and forth with this. So I'm just going to go now with my more pointy brush because I'm going more towards the details of the flower. And I'm going to dip my brush in that really beautiful light green. So you see it's loaded with paint. Don't be stingy. You know, I used to be like, I don't know why, perhaps because I wasn't sure or perhaps because I'm still not sure why, but every time I used to, like I was afraid, perhaps I wasn't sure. Um, insecurities, right? That's the word. So I used to um, dip my brush and very lightly just tap it very lightly and so it took me hours and hours and hours because it's like layer over light layer over light layer until i finally get to the green um and then i have someone like asking me like how many layers uh sounds like an announcement how many layers does it take to get to the center of the views no um <laughs> so anyways i used to dip my brush like that like i used to just very light very light like almost like afraid i'm gonna mess it up i'm gonna mess it up perhaps not insecurities in my mind i wasn't sure it, i was starting off with watercolors and so i noticed that i used to do that and then i don't know maybe perhaps on a forum somewhere i someone was asking like how many layers how many layers do you get how many layers do you do in order for you to know that, hi, how are you? In order for you to know that what a color is done, how many layers, how many layers, how many layers? And you know what? That's a very good question. And then so the person that was doing like the class or like showing or doing a demo or whatever, she's like, until you see it finish, that's how many layers it takes. She really didn't really quite uh, answer it. And she's like, but if you're not sure, between um, she said like three layers and I'm like I have I have done watercolor paintings <sighs> you're melting <laughs> and no why are you melting no so um, she's like yeah well it takes like three layers or four layers depending on how much uh, what watercolor type of Thing, technique that you're using three to four layers and I was like I'm going to find out why because I'm the one who's very skimpy with my watercolors like I'm afraid to deep it I'm afraid to really get that out of there get that and deep my brush to the point that it doesn't hold on to more paint I'm so afraid of it because I'm afraid that I'm going to mess it up and you know always remember everything is fixable there's nothing that you cannot fix in watercolors except purple like it's hard to get that out 
but most of the colors are very lightweight unless you work like me with some opaque colors and stuff like that then you have a little bit more difficulty except like blue and colors like that like the obvious things you know black blue colors that are really strong so I actually did the experiment like how many layers does it take for you to kind of just know that your watercolor is done and so I done several 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 pictures of different things and I still quite couldn't figure out because one of them was like how many layers did I did to this part of the painting it was like seven to eight layers and how many layers did I did to this part of the painting three layers how many how many layers did I did for this part two layers and I'm like I'm now confused so I really got like the lady like she's like telling you know everybody's like it depends on what you're doing it depends on what you're doing and not really quite um knowing how many layers do i really have to do in order for my painting to be finished so i i felt like you know what still very unfair because i got like i didn't get no answer from her and i didn't get no answer from my own technique or whatever so I'm just going to continue just doing and f make sure that I know exactly if I'm layering on watercolors, like how many layers do I really freaking need? Because it's an answer. It's something that it has been pounding on my head. It's not important, but it's part of technique. And, you know, for someone that is starting, um, my issue was to go over layers. You understand? To stop. Like, when am I like... Is it okay now? When am I going to stop? Like, this is the third layer. And now I'm going back and doing more color and doing more shadow and doing more shadow. You understand? So there's got to be like a limit out there, a number that I can use so I can stop. And so for almost every artwork that I do, I use no more than four layers. Like, I really don't use more than four layers. Unless it's backgrounds or something that requires like a deep, deep color. And the reason why I don't do more than four layers if I were to be layering a watercolor is because I'm using, like I'm dipping the brush and it's like, you see, heavy. So you don't need that many layers if you're really dipping that brush into the paint. Now, if you are going to do like I did in the beginning, like I was telling you when I first started, then you might need up to eight layers because you're basically just watering over watering over watering over watering. So I'll suggest you to start practicing like how much water does my brush actually, like get to know your materials. I feel like that's very important, especially your brushes. If you're doing watercolors, like get to know them, like really work on practice is like the best thing to actually let you know how you work and the type of style that you do for me i feel that a lot of people are like 50 50. some people like to just paint directly and don't do more than two layers or three layers or whatever or perhaps just boom right straight or some people paint by layers and i feel in my homeless homeless in my humble opinion that the best way of actually paint in watercolor is a little bit more control it will help someone that is learning is by layering don't get me wrong i love to do things straight to the point and stuff but unless you're painting like a one stroke or something like that then you really don't need to do like direct painting um so people like it i don't find quite many artists that do i i don't know what it is about the layering and what color it just makes me like gag every time i see it because it's absolutely in a bad way not in a bad not, not in a bad way in a good way just makes me like oh, you know i get so excited because i see the layers the translucent of the material of the medium so yeah and i'm just trying to finish hey i'm just trying to finish like the bottom like the inside right in the middle of the flower so that's what i'm gonna do here and you know if you were doing something like this 
don't beat yourself like it takes practice and if you feel like okay so without the sketch I can't because I get lost or whatever do the sketch there's so many things that you can do hi how are you thank you so there's so many things that you can actually do in order for you to paint there's people that use like Photoshop there's, there's people that and do really nice jobs there's people that use um, they transfer their images there's people that do all kinds of stuff like there's so much out there there's uh, an uh, announcement in YouTube the other day that I was looking at and there's like a there's like a camera of some sort that allows you to transfer like if you were had like a picture and allows you to transfer into the paper and you can trace from it like there's so many things that you can do if I can get a hand of that thing but I don't know like I'm lazy and I don't want to spend no more in our material so let me just you know do what I do and just create the way I like because I, I don't like to complicate my life either even though it will help you a whole lot if you were if you had like one of those um mechanisms or whatever thing images that I just mentioned that are really good for painting and I'm not against those at all especially the ones that are helping you to become better at what you love which is art and we're just actually going to so this is a very pointy brush if you were wondering this is low cornell this is number 10 and i bought it i think in michael's or ac moore one of them too a very long time ago and i am obsessed is the right word with the brush because it's so gentle and at the same time the bristles are hard enough so it doesn't make um it's just straight to the point just like i like to paint so i'm just gonna go lift this up just a top bit and like i said i'm using part of the paper white so it can kind of just help my painting i promise that i will <laughs> i will put more light like the sun is like what happened to the sun here just boom, poof so yeah and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side just using my trusty purple here and just adding that to my just rounding up basically just going around 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 and using that white to my advantage see it okay not all the time we have to cover the white I'm not a purist either. A purist is like someone that just like reusing watercolor has to be like completely just white, 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 and whatever. Not one of those. I actually use black and white or whatever you thing and tool that I can use to accomplish the work or whatever it is that I want to do on that particular painting. So today's Saturday and I'm just glad that tomorrow I'm actually off I know it's like oh my god how pitiful but believe me if you work like me like almost 14 hours you'll be like oh no she deserves it <laughs> so I'm very very happy that I am off tomorrow and I hope that I can bring a little bit more paint if I get to even though I'm a bit skittish with YouTube if I get to actually upload this um video to youtube because i'm like oh my face looks a certain way oh i don't have no makeup oh my god they can see my real uh <laughs> my real bags <laughs> that they can see that i can't sleep or that i don't sleep i'm not gonna post it on youtube you know if you ever get to see this <laughs> if you ever i'm so sincere if you ever get to see this um video I'm actually uploading it straight from it's called Periscope and what I do on Periscope is that I'm actually just it goes it's like YouTube going from Periscope to YouTube YouTube and then I also have Twitter and so they're seeing me live from Twitter and Twitter has like a really cool thing like they literally seeing your life and they're listening to you 
So that's why I'm like, oh my God, did I just did that? Did I just said that? Live is not the same as recorded. Believe me, because you can just take all those chunks of craziness out. Craziness out. Live is like your real self. So it's more difficult. I'm just gonna use a hint of that purple bluish tone, a Peruvian bluish, and I'm gonna use this to, yeah, to what I just did right there, and I'm going to lift it up. Even though that doesn't explain what I just said, but I'm just marking like the shadows and basically just going over like. I don't know how to explain this the best way that I can the most simplest way is like if you were if you were like done with the painting and you're you take a pen and you outline that area so some of the parts of the painting are outlined with the tip of this magnificent 10 Louis Cornell brush 70 20 ultra round it's ultra so anyway, so that's what I'm doing and I'll do the same thing on the other corner because it's helping me to kind of just close up and at the same time use that as my shadow. And I don't worry much about the water droplets or whatever if an area is too wet and I do and you happen to do this, everything can be corrected. All you gotta do is and voila, problem solved do the same thing again and that's it but just don't do it as clumsy as i did okay i have to do it again <laughs> all right and you notice also like you notice also that i'm not like i don't have a piece of napkin like people are like oh she don't have a piece of napkin what is she doing a horror if you do what i do and you know if you clean your brush very good you really don't need as much as the paper. I don't blot. I have a thing. Well, in that case, I guess I am a purist. Okay, I'm contradicting myself often. I do that, so I truly apologize, but I guess I'm a purist in that aspect. Um, and it's because I don't like to blot with uh, like the tissue paper or yeah, the, the napkin. I don't. If I if I'm using a napkin, I don't like to blot on the paper with the napkin. I rather do it with the brush. And the reason why is because it changes. Some people might say you're crazy, but I feel like it changes the texture of the watercolor because it's wet. Um, don't quote me on that, please. I don't want the watercolor patrol to go after me. But I just feel like if you blot the paper with uh, if if you blot the watercolor paper with a napkin, bounty napkin, whatever it is that you have in your house, non-sponsor, that it's just gonna ruin the paper. I don't know. I just don't like to do it that way. So I use the brush to take care of my puddles. I'm going to now just go right here. Again, using like the white against, or the light against, not white, light against dark technique. And I'm pushing forward with my purple color on that beautiful pinkish color that I just left there. And I'm adding it to the petal that I left, kind of just hanging in there all lonely and alone. And I'm just going to do like I know what I'm doing and lift this up and kind of just round this a little bit for this petal over here. And then I'm going to go on with the same brush, just add some water just to squeeze that. So this is the end resultas. I want to turn it over so you see that it makes sense what I'm doing. Okie doke. Moving on. You remember? I hate when I do this, by the way. You remember? What's her name again? Oh my god, I can't believe I forgot her name. Julia Childs. You see? My money's not out off yet. I'm still here. 
Remember Julie Charles? Isn't she awesome? She was awesome. Okie doke. All right, for those of you who don't know who Julia Child is, she was an excellent chef. And she was on PBS like for the longest and I loved her. And, you know, I feel so sad that she's gone. And she left a rip in my heart because she was awesome. And, um, actually SNL has a pretty cool sketch of Julia. Um, and I love every time like I feel like down or depressed or I feel like my painting did not went well uh oh I go in and I watch that as an old um sketch which is funny and you should watch it so you can be happier or laugh a little you know this life is too short and so we're gonna go so this is my leaf over here that I just created with the same green and I'm just as you can tell I'm adding a little bit of that green on top so that will be my second layer right I'm counting all right but don't do that don't do what I do don't count it just go with the flow intuition into your painting which is much better than doing things a little bit more technical even though you still have to use a little bit of your brain to finish it I'm sorry I'm being funny it's a joke it's a joke okay don't come up don't come at me it is this is my normal me so okay and you notice that I left on both of the leaves I left a little bit a little bit no that's not Julia just a little bit of salt All right remember Paula Dean that was another one she also made me smile a whole lot until something happened, I don't know what happened with Paul Dean. But, yeah. And, oh boy. And, I hope that you guys are not listening to that. Paula Dean was funny. She used to say, like, oh, just a little bit of butter. And he was like, boom, a whole half a pint. Funny. All right. So, I used to watch, by the way, now that I'm talking about Food Network, I used to watch Food Network like almost every day um, when I was like a stay-at-home mom. And I used to literally copy some of the recipes of Rachel Ray and of other people. I remember doing recipes from Rachel Ray. I love Rachel Ray too because Rachel Ray, she is freaking awesome. And the last time that I was able to watch Foot Network, like watch Foot Network and really relax, was when Rachel Ray won a competition with Bobby Flay. I think he was, she was with Bobby Flay. Or anyway, I think one of them was with Emerald. I don't remember, but it was something like that. That was the last time that I literally watched TV. And that was a long time, I know. I don't have time for anything but I'm constantly around and I watch YouTube videos and stuff like that so I'm not that on hip I still have <laughs> I still have fixing okay we're just gonna do the tip of that petal I'm just kind of just going with what I see here and I'm just gonna granulate technique Granulation is awesome. Just gonna use that pinkish color to add to the petal. And we're almost done. All we gotta do is do the veins, which for that I need another tool. I also learned something besides not shutting up. I learned um, that for each thing that you do, you might need the right tool. So if you need to do details, you use the brush correct for details. That's something that what a color actually, not all the time, but if I can open this tube, thank you. Where's my technical support? Hello? Nobody? Okay, I think I got it out. Got it out, yeah. I'm using permanent yellow deep 
This is from the color of Holbein. Holbein is a really cool also, but a very, just like it's the color deep. So it's yellow deep. It's a very pungent yellow, but I love it. I love it. And oh my God, don't make me, don't please. Okay, I will, just for you, okay? I have to sacrifice my... This is the color yellow deep, okay? So that's the color, it's a pretty pungent uh, yellow. The cool thing about this yellow is like almost like white lead. So everywhere or anywhere that you put in that yellow, it just disperse and it creates, uh, you know, the splash of yellow that you want. That's what we're going to use to create that beautiful centaur. Let's say if you need to move a little bit, like if you need to move um, the purple away, you don't know how, use, use most definitely use wash. Sometimes I do have used wash. Also, that will help you with if you have, you know, somewhat the problem that I'm having right now. No, not really. We're good. We're on the good track. Okay. I'm sorry. No more accent jokes. But you know, I had my art teacher a long, long time ago. And he's Russian. And he used to say, good, very, very, very good. You have to stone. It looks like a heart. I don't know. Something like that. But that's what we're going to do so i'm going to round again i'm using this brush because it's a little bit more pointy and i can play with it just a little bit okay all right and oh by the way just in case you were wondering what i'm doing right now okay i am actually cheating no i'm not cheating you I don't know if you ever seen people that do oil paint because I was like, oh, you know, a lot of people are against scumbling like the watercolor patrol. I don't know if you guys know them, but there's people out there that criticize every single thing. So what I'm doing right now is called scumbling. Okay. So scumbling is like making things like the lightest or just scraping a little bit of that paint that you just laid out and it just helps you develop that painting um, and develop like the space of white that you might need for your painting so that's what I just did it's good that I say it just in case you guys were wondering or to help you of course this is all to help you with your own endeavors in painting because that's the reason of this video so you can learn something Besides talking your ears off, because I want to entertain you today. All right, think of me as your Julia Childs of paint. All right, not really. I can't compare to Julia, she's unique. She's too much, too much. She is something else and I need to shut up now. All right, adding the third layer, right? Third layer or fourth? I don't know, but I'm just doing it a little bit more darker because it needs it. And I'm going to do the same thing on this area. And then I'm going to unite this area as well. Okay, almost done. All right, now I'm going to get rid of my frosty brush over here and pray that I can find the brush that I need because the day before yesterday I was I did look look at that I was painting the acrylics and I was using my watercolor brush I know but if you my excuse is that if you are really like quick and you keep your paint brush clean all the time then you don't have a problem with acrylics so that's my excuse should you be using watercolor brushes that are very expensive with acrylic? If you can clean them, go ahead. If you can clean them, 
because that's what I was using yesterday. Mm -hmm. You have to clean them, okay? Don't leave acrylic dried up on a watercolor brush because that will be the end of your brush. And as you all know, it is very, very expensive. Extremely expensive. Art is expensive. Okay, I said no more jokey jokes about the accents. But I do have an accent too, so it's like making fun of myself. Alright, so... It's making fun of myself, right? I have a strong accent. Sometimes people are like, oh, what, what are you? Like, yeah, like, oh, I'm Spanish. Oh, no, what are there? I hear like an R and an S. I was like, yes, yes. I'm a Hispanic. Alright, I'm just gonna... Gosh. And we're going to do... We're gonna start doing the vein of that. Whoops! <laughs> Sorry. It's like the phone is like, oh, I gave up. Okay. So you notice that I'm using the right tool. Just in case. Use your right tools for your right things, okay? And of course, as I'm doing the vein, I'm also like throwing in with some type of scumblings, you know, just going around the line that I just made and making it a little bit better for my watercolor painting of my leaf over here. Also, before I stop talking and just paint, um, Notice that I use like different tones in both of them. Like I use a yellow tone and then this one right here, I use a green and brownish, so I don't make them the same. It's just good for the painting. This is just something that we do because it looks more interesting. And there is a bunch of stuff, but I cannot give you everything at once. Hello. Okay. Right. There's a, there's a reason, of course, you know, I feel, <gasps> thank you for the hearts. I hope that if I upload the video to actual YouTube, I hope they can see the hearts because if they can't see the hearts, they'll be like, who is she talking to? Hearts? Oh my God. She's one of those crazy, but yeah, Periscope, they give you hearts for being pretty. No, for your, I hope those are hearts for the painting. Thank you. So, just shooting over here too, that's not true, I'm making it interesting and then I'm going to kind of just, what we'll call, just make it a little bit more even by going on the corners and outline, outline, because I can't compete with him or he can't compete with me, outline my corner there with my brush. So we're just gonna outline and I'm going to throw in the water to the top, okay? Perhaps I should, um, I don't know if that's a good idea to just kind of just zoom it in. I don't know. Let me think about that. Because my chest area is in the middle of. Oh, if you're also wondering why I have the camera like this, it's not because of my own liking, because I want you to see my face. Believe me, right now, it's the least thing that I want you to look at. But I work in my <laughs> kitchen table and I really don't have no more space. I really don't. It's espacico no more. Okay. So I'm going to outline. Okay. And I'll be here too. As quick as I can because I want these wet. And I'm going to get that wet brush. Like I said, I'm sweeping over. Okay. So I don't like to, I don't like to um, show much outline, even though it does have that outline in. Um, just because, but 
I like to just keep things a little bit and I'm just going to turn the painting to you so you can see what the outline is see it that's the outline right there okay so you can see the leaf coming through we're going to do a little bit more of the line or the grain of the leaf on this side and that's gonna help you also you don't have to be like me you can just do a leaf you don't have to be like me but I want this to look really nice because this is a very special painting for my dear old friend if she if I maybe I'll do another one but for now yeah. so and I also wanted to do one for my sister because I went to her I went to her I went to her house and she doesn't have a oh hold on a second oh I'm gonna beat the crap out of this kid no way hold on a second I'm gonna kill you Right. I can work under stress. No, I'm very good at working under stress, unfortunately. And sad to say, I didn't want to tell you my secret. But yeah. So I'm gonna come here and do the leaf I'm going that way because it looks cool. And to this one, the same thing, just outline here, perhaps over here, going that way, going this way, going a little bit here, outlining this side over here, and I'm just gonna, okay. I'm not gonna go crazy on the details, but you get the idea. And I'm watering, 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 watering up. The only thing though that with these layers, the watercolor is drying like as quick as. I was gonna say something, but I don't know. It's just drying very quick and stuff. All right, I'm gonna get a blue. And I'm going to outline the so somewhat transparent part of it. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. Just drag with me because it will help me and it won't look as much as outline as you want it. Wait, what I just said? You want it outline. Anyways, so that's what I'm doing. That area and you're sweeping up with water. God, I he is just concentrating me. Okay, so I have a reason. Okay, dealing with teenagers, I didn't know what I was doing when I was having children, and they become 14 year old monsters, and you're like, oh my god, what? Was I like that? No, I don't remember. I don't recall it. They're calling me. I'm a what? Generation? No, I'm a mille my millennial. I don't know. They call me a name. Especially my 21 year old. Be believe it or not, I have a 21 year old. Do not ask questions. I just have one. Okay? I had her when I was 12. I'm joking. <laughs> I have a 20 a 21 year old daughter and she's like um yeah you will never understand it because you are such and such I'm like oh okay right I don't know 
and you don't know what a video cassette is, so yeah, shut up. They really don't know. They don't know what is a rotative phone. They don't know what is paying a quarter for a public phone. You remember? I remember that. It's like our generation was like the transition of everything. Remember when the first CD came? Everybody threw their everything out, like all the video cassettes out. I remember when Blockbuster went to, um, remember, I'm sure that some of you remember, when Blockbuster was like, we are out because, you know, all the CDs and everything. And then um, you got Netflix and you got Hulu and you got all that stuff. So who wants to go to Blockbuster and watch a video? Except someone that is like from that generation. You know what I'm talking about, right? Someone that we're not gonna name her. Cause I went to Blockbuster up to the last day <laughs> before they closed the freaking store. Oh my God. I was like, why are you guys doing this to me? I don't know if you guys remember waiting for like the like you know when the movie it still does but it's just not the same because you can find it anywhere like one of when the movies are like pass on to the masses i don't know how you call that but you know what i'm talking about and i remember waiting on blockbuster like when they're gonna have you remember that i know you do come on now um they used to tell you like oh yeah it hasn't come in yet when is the new movie or such and such coming and you like waited for it you understand what i'm saying <sighs> those were the days so yeah we are of that generation and my daughter was like yeah you are also of the generation of not keeping your your bags your plastic bags or whatever or just oh my god So anyways, so yeah, so my daughter used to say like, you are from that generation, like you didn't take care of our seas and now we're going to global warming. And I'm like, excuse me, that was your grandmother's generation. She's like, both of y'all. It was like, since you are such a great in environment, environmentalist person, right? When you don't move to Alaska, where you don't have to like really use no electricity whatsoever. And on the, on the way out, you give me your phone. And she looked at me like I had three heads. Like, by the way, I can live without a phone. Like I can seriously live with a, without a cell phone. Like, do you guys remember when it was like, what was the life before cell phones? Like I can do that. I can actually survive all week without no problems of not having a cell phone isn't that odd but when i told her that she looked at me like i had three heads and i was a dragon of somewhere and she just i know she cursed at me inside of her no she did you know what i'm talking about she's like how horrid of a person can you be <laughs> Because I told her, but you can't live without your phone. <laughs> Remember the beepers? Oh my god. The beepers. Is that, yeah, beepers. Remember what I'm talking about, right? You used to text and you used to like hang them over here. And they're like, they just, it was just for texting. <sighs> I'm of that generation. Like transition of everything. It would transition in from everything. Wow. But anyways, the artwork is done. Um, I'll tell you what. I'm pretty happy with it, except the middle part, because I need like a little bit more. Like I feel like I need a little bit more of. So I'm going to get some white, because you know. I never said it was going to be like complete watercolor, right? Oh my god! 
It felt, the cut throughout fell right in the middle of my painting. I'll die. Anyways, I'm just going to cheat a bit with the white of this color. Just gonna add that yellow that we were talking about before, the one from Holbein. And I'm going to revisit the middle part of the flower. Okay. Come on now, come on now, come on now. Forget about I can't live without a phone, huh? No, I really can, I really do. You know? I really can. I'm just adding a bit of that white on the far corner of the painting and mixing it on the middle side. Now, once you use gouache in your painting as a watercolor, then you have to change your water and you can dip your brush again um, on a, another watercolor because then you're no longer painting with watercolor. It will be more of a gouache painting. So that means that right after that, even though my water has to be cleaned up a long time ago, I can't go back to, you know, and put watercolor if I'm using the same water, like I have to change it. That's all I needed to say. A little bit more uncomplicated, right? And I think that's it. Maybe it will be here. Okay. And over here. And I'm also going to cover over here because the part of where the petal is coming out, it actually makes or colliding with. So I want to take that off from there. And I want to talk to him after this. Okay. I think we are good to go just gonna go on that side just expand this juice with our bed and perhaps help her it's a her or help it by taking it further wind it up just a bit more and i'm also going to I want to deepen that middle part over here. Okay. Just gonna I'm gonna turn it over very carefully and that's it my friends thank you so much for watching I'm sorry I am at home and yeah but here it is hope that you guys enjoyed this demo replay it back and learn something from it. I'm going to go and change that water and perhaps come along and do 
another demo next time until I figure out what's next on my ideas or brewing in my head, whatever it is that I wanted to do. I've seen a whole lot of great works and I feel like, wow, artists are freaking amazing. So whenever you get a chance, go watch someone else that you probably will learn something new from that person. And I'm just going to leave you with my work for now. We play this stuff. Hope, hopefully it's useful. And I'll see you guys on the next time. Bye.